Okay, we're back and uh, this is gonna be a short section on the installation of what I would call the, you know, the rear housing, which is what the transmission um, uh, mounts up to. Um, so we have everything ready to go with regards to our um, dampener plate. All that's uh, done and I covered that in a previous video. Um, and now we're ready to um, do the prep work and put on this rear housing. So a couple of things, just some tips here. Um, these bottom uh, corners here and the center one, uh, they go into the aluminum pan. So you're gonna wanna use your, um, your anti-seize for uh, aluminum going into that. Um, these uh, go into the block through this uh, through the housing and they go into the block and those are uh, 5 16 and 3 8 and then you have 5 16 bolts here these are open on the back so I'm going to use uh, some of the uh, the ultra gray on those threads because it's open into an oil uh, oil area uh, this this right here these three go into uh, are open in the back and uh, so I've done, I've chased all the threads. Uh, again, always good to do that, chase the threads. Um, gonna use my surface prep, Permatex for surface prep, the uh, anaerobic um, gasket maker, clean both surfaces. Uh, pretty straightforward process as far as um, just uh, gonna spray the surface prep on both surfaces and then um, lube up the gasket uh, on both sides, insert that, put the put the bolts in, and then do the uh, the proper torque specs, and then uh, we will be ready for transmission mount. Hope that helps. Okay, in this uh, short segment, I just wanted to uh, walk through rebuilding the um, the hub assembly for the water pump. This is a, a drive assembly in place of the earlier generator models. Um, and I uh, wanted to just kind of show you how this is all put together. Um, so kind of, uh, this is all apart already, obviously, but uh, kind of go in you know, reverse order to, uh, to take it apart. But essentially you have your main drive shaft here and you have two bearings that sit right here on uh, these, uh, these uh, bearing surfaces. And uh, I'm gonna show you the bearing number. This is a SKF 6203-2RSH slash C3. Um, I actually found these on eBay from a seller and uh, 12 bucks for a pair of them. So very, very, uh, very inexpensive uh, for a good quality bearing like that. So basically you've got your drive I call this like a drive dog on the uh, on the end there, and you've got to um, knock out the spring tension pin to be able to take the drive dog off, and then your bearing comes off this way. Then you'll have a bearing here, and it comes off obviously this way. Uh, so to go back in reverse order with it, this bearing is going to go right on this surface here and um, you can just use a you know a socket or, uh, I just have a you know set up a, a vise in a socket and um, just lightly tap that back on there then you can tap the drive dog back onto the end of the shaft then drive in your spring tension pin uh, and I just picked up a new one of these at the uh, at the hardware store um, unless the you know, unless the, the original is in perfect condition, I would replace these. And one of these I found that uh, it was loose. So um, good just to replace that. It's not expensive at all. Uh, take the other bearing and it goes onto this surface here. Uh, and then you're basically ready to reinstall. Now this, uh, the way this works is this is the water pump end and there's a lip right in here, just in the inside here. So the entire, unit here with the bearings goes down from the pulley side goes down so you have to first take that get this first bearing here through this bearing surface and then down and then tap it in and then you have a snap ring right here that 
fits into this groove right there. And of course you have a half moon key on the shaft and then you have your pulley and your uh, nut and washer. And that's how you rebuild one of these things. Um, I, you know, most of the time, you're probably gonna find that these have never been messed with before and they probably, uh, probably feel a little rocky. And for the amount of money uh, it takes, uh, which is just a couple of bearings and maybe, you know, a new spring tension pin, um, to, that's a good peace of mind for, you know, under 20 bucks. Uh, anyway, hope that helps. Okay, in this uh, section, we're going to talk about uh, rebuilding the uh, Sherwood uh, water pump uh, for Chris Craft 283. Um, the early water pumps, um, or original water pumps, I should say, were a gear-driven pump. Uh, sometimes you see those, um, but they replace those sometime later with the impeller type pumps. Um, I certainly prefer an impeller type pump over a gear pump, but um, uh, this will cover the impellers uh, rather than the gears. Um, so I'm going to just talk about how to uh, kind of rebuild these, uh, just a little bit of a tutorial. Uh, I've got one completed. Um, and uh, I'm going to walk you through the tools that I used as well as the basic procedure. Um, some of the common tools that you'll need, definitely will need a snap ring wrench, uh, um, and you'll need uh, maybe a hammer, some needle nose, a couple different screwdrivers. I use a, a little larger punch here, flat file, maybe an X-Acto knife, uh, assembly-wise, Vaseline or uh, maybe straight white lithium grease. Uh, and then this uh, product here, which is a silicone lubricant. Um, now, the main parts of the pump, I've had uh, beat blasted, cleaned, and fully prepped uh, so that they're nice uh, and uniform. Um, the original pumps uh, were not painted. A lot of them you'll see painted, but some of them you'll see uh, raw. And my plan is to um, clear coat this with a satin uh, finish so that it keeps them from tarnishing. Um, now, you can get a full rebuild kit, and I will put a link to this guy in the description. He's the man when it comes to these Sherwood uh, pump kits. So I bought a full rebuild kit from him. And uh, these are the various parts and components of the pump we'll go through in the, in the kit. Um, okay, so first let's talk about um, the main shaft um, and this, uh, this bearing. This bearing obviously fits right up below the drive dog on the shaft. Um, now the drive, uh, the, uh, the bearing will get seated in the front housing right like this. Okay, so we'll seat that down in there and that bearing will be installed. Now, before we go putting the shaft in there, a couple of tips. Uh, you've got two keys for the impellers, and you get these new keys with the kit. It's a good idea to check the fit of the keys in the shaft. Uh, they should not be loose or sloppy, uh, but at the same time, they should not be so tight you've got to beat them in, the, in there with a hammer. Because once the shaft is through the housing, uh, you're not going to have the same kind of access to those keys uh, to get them in there. So on this particular pump, um, my keys were fitting a little too tight. So I used this small, fine, flat file, and I just laid them there and just gave them a little bit of rub back and forth on, the, on the both sides and kind of test fit them in there. They should be tight, um, uh, but you should not have to beat them in and not be able to get them back out. So uh, that's a good idea just to check that fit. If you if you put your key in there and it is completely wobbly and sloppy, probably should ask about getting a new shaft uh, because you're going to have all kinds of slop and probably tear up the the uh, the brass insert on the impeller and then you're just looking for problems. Okay, you also get a new snap ring. You get a new, um, this is the water watertight um, part of the pump uh, where you have a spring mechanism, you have a rubber ceramic end, and then kind of a, um, a ceramic uh, 
face that that runs on, and we'll, we'll show you how to put that in there. Um, okay, so we say we got our bearing put in there, we got that seated in there. Then when we flip this over, you're gonna see that inside ledge in there, that the next thing you do is, it comes with some lubricant here. I get a Q-tip and lube this piece up and seat it down inside right there, inside there. You get that fully seated into that groove, okay? And at that point, then you're ready to put the shaft through the bearing and coming out this side, like this. Okay, so now you can see here that you can still get to the keys, but you're just dealing with this pump housing, and, and uh, so it's you don't want to fight with the keys at this point. You want to have those kind of already uh, already squared away. Now at this point, you've got this spring mechanism. I'll just kind of open this up. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed. And what happens is that this is this is seated down. Let's just pretend that's already in there. The face of this goes, and you, and I put a little bit of lube on this, um, but really you're not supposed to put much on that at all. So that goes down, and then that runs on the face of this, this ceramic part. Basically, you push that down until you get it past the snap ring groove in the shaft, which is right there. And then you grab your snap ring, slide it down, and get the snap ring in there, and then you've got a full rotating assembly that has the, uh, the sealed part in it. Now at that point, you're ready for this gasket. And uh, I used a little bit of Vaseline just on your fingertips, and you basically just wanna saturate the pores of this paper gasket. Um, does a couple things, just kind of seals it a little bit. And again, you can use white lithium grease, but just kind of seals it a little bit. And if you go to take this apart, your gasket is likely to come off intact and you can be able to you know, pick the pump apart and reuse that gasket. So our gasket's down and we've got um, our rotating assembly in there, our sealed part of the rotating assembly in there. And now you can take it and you can put your keys in. And again, I put the keys in and I kind of test fit everything, slid the, slid the impeller down, made sure that, that I got a good, um, a good fit right over that key all the way down before I try to go to the next, uh, next part of the assembly. Next part of the assembly is where we take this middle housing, the intermediate housing here, um, and we're gonna slide it down over that. Now, before I do that, you can see here, these are the inlets and the outlets. There is a little plate that goes in there that you pull out of your original pump. Here it is right here. And it actually goes like this, and you can see this hole here and this hole here goes in there like this. Oops. Okay. And then you have your original screw that goes through the case into the back of that and holds this plate in, in place. So go ahead and put that in there before you slide this on. We'll just pretend it's in there. And then you're gonna slide that down Put this down you're going to line up the pins the kits come with new pins here but if your pins are fine and and they and they, you know, the other housings all go together just fine I'm, I'm not worried about replacing those um, but if there was if they were kind of mushroomed out or you're having a hard time getting these two housings to come together you might just replace those pins so let's just say that let's just put, oops let's just say that's in there Okay, and we've got our plate in there, like so. All right, so now we have our keys. We have our plate in there. This housing is screwed together with the new screws, and uh, we're ready to put the impellers in. Now this is where we can take some of this silicone grease. You don't wanna just like gob this in there. You're just gonna get it on your fingers and you wanna just lube the impellers and lube this outer ring here. 
and then you insert those on. The first one goes down, make sure it's seated well, all the way down in there. And then you have a divider plate, which comes in your full kit. You slide the divider plate on, and then you put on the next impeller. And that should all go down and get seated in there. Um, and basically you just have to bend the impellers with your fingers and get it to slide down in there. It's, you know, just, it's not difficult. It's just, you just work with a little bit and slide those impellers down inside the housing. Now at this point, you're almost home free here. You've got the back housing, your, and which has your outlets. Now, what comes in the kit is a new um, insert for the back shaft. And this kind of modern insert is a uh, carbon, that's a steel sleeve with the carbon things in there. And I don't know if you can see, there's like, see those little holes in there? Those are filled with carbon. The original was just a carbon sleeve all together and you just kind of punch that out and, and get that out of there and clean that hole. This metal part, I used a press to press that in there carefully um, and ensure that, um, that it was seated properly. Also the back plate, if you've got any big grooves in the back plate, you'll wanna flatten that out and ensure that this uh, back um, plate is flat. Uh, this one is, even though it's stained, um, it's extremely flat, and there's no, I can, you know, there's nothing you can catch with your nail on there. There's no grooves in it. It's just kind of stained. So I elected to um, leave that alone and not try to try to do any sanding on it. Uh, but you can flatten that out with uh, some float glass and some 400 grit, 600 grit paper, that type of thing. But this one is in good shape. Doesn't have any uh, heavy grooves in it. So we've got our impellers in there. We get our other gasket here, do the same procedure with the Vaseline or the white lithium grease, apply that down, and then slide this housing over that. And line everything up, put your screws in, and you're essentially done. You've got uh, plugs, there's three plugs, two right here and then one on the bottom. And I'm going to be replacing those original plugs that were just kind of old and corroded uh, with some new solid brass 8th-inch uh, uh, MPT pipe plugs. Um, and you're pretty much done. Um, the uh, only thing to think about is make sure either you're going to replicate what you had before, or in this case I have twin engines, so I've got a standard rotation and opposite rotation. Um, you got to think about the inlets and the outlets, and which is your opposite rotation and your uh, standard rotation, <clears throat> which is not a big deal. You just have to to get that right in your head about where you're pulling pulling from. Uh, and this is an old impeller just to kind of demonstrate that. You know, if you're turning this way, okay, you're pulling in from one side and uh, these openings here, and then you're pumping out the other side. So in this case, this is set up for a standard rotation, which means looking at the back of the pump, look at the back of the motor, I'm turning right hand, right hand propeller clockwise. So um, these are my inlets and these are my outlets. So inlets from my seawater pump, uh, seawater through hole, and then outlets to the motor, left and right side, left and right bank. So hope that helps um, on rebuilding these. Um, uh, they're they're pretty bulletproof if they're maintained. Um, you know, follow your best judgment on uh, when to uh, when to replace your impellers. Usually after a few seasons, they should be checked or replaced. Uh, all depending on uh, you know kind of how you use the boat and uh, and its layup time and that type type of thing. Um, so hopefully this helps. On to the next part of it.